this next article, and you know, it is. It's also September eleventh. Um, eighteen years. Eighteen years ago, that's crazy. That is absolutely wild that it's been that long. Um, but I want to start this uh, hour, and uh, I want to I want to tell you about what I think is the greatest one of the greatest articles I've ever read by David Ferguson um, about the late former Senator Linda Collins. This is a comprehensive article, uh, folks. If you don't know. If you don't remember the topics of what this article is going to cover, then um, just take it from me. This is the truth about what happens when you stick to your principles. David Ferguson and Linda Collins were very good friends. David Ferguson, a former uh, head of the Bureau of Legislative Research for 30 years, um, a 30-year career in there, and uh, this is what he writes, conduitforaction.org. It's been almost three months since Linda Collins was found murdered. I attended her funeral, but it's still hard to accept my friend is gone. I keep expecting a call or text saying, I will be passing through town. Would you and Susan like to meet me for a late supper? Some people have a few good friends. Other people tend to have a lot of casual acquaintances. But Linda had lots of close friends who she cared about very much. She made us all feel special because, to her, we were special. I first met Linda when she decided, uh, when she was, uh, I'm sorry, when she was uh, elected as a state representative in 2010. I was the director of the Bureau of Legislative Research and was introducing myself to new legislators. She was from my home area, and we quickly became friends. She went by Linda Collins Smith back then, but after her divorce, she dropped the hyphenated part. In the decades I worked for the legislature, I met a lot of good people, but no other legislator can compare to her for her dedication to keeping her promises. It's not unusual for a conservative politician to identify as pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, pro-family values, for limited government, and for lower taxes. But identifying as a conservative and voting conservative are two different things. Some politicians merely say those things to get elected. Others want to vote conservative but have a hard time keeping campaign promises. There's tremendous pressure from influential politicians who want them to water down their promises for political reasons and big businesses that push them to get a bigger slice of the government pie. The pressure is great, greater than most people realize. Hands down, Linda was the strongest example I've ever seen of a politician committed to keeping her promises in the face of the Goliaths who stand in the way insisting be pragmatic. Pragmatic can be a code word meaning conservatives shouldn't keep their promises and instead join the liberal big government crowd. Above all, Linda was a Christian and was always guided by her belief. She enjoyed being in the legislature but she would not fall in line with leaders in order to have a smooth path to re-election. Re-election always took a back seat, as you'll see in this article, and the establishment types of both parties made her pay for not getting in line. If you are a fat cat who prefers to elect a chameleon who will pay you back for your support by helping you get a bigger slice of the government pie, then Linda was not for you. Linda infuriated many politicians because in seeing her promise keeping, they saw what they were not. Even if you are a liberal who opposed every bill she supported, Linda is still an example of the strength and dedication you would hope for in a politician representing your views. David Ferguson writes, I want to tell you, about a few political struggles Linda took on. I hope it will help you see her uncommon dedication to principle. Uncommon. In telling about these struggles, you will see that she found herself having to first fight Democrat leaders and then Republican leaders. Some who read this will find themselves aligned not with Linda, 
but with Democrats or with pragmatic or left-leaning Republicans? If so, that's okay. Because my point here is not to criticize her opponents. Instead, the point here is to help you see that Linda meant what she said, said what she meant, and gave it 100%. Linda was elected to the House of Representatives in 2010 as a Democrat. Linda was about as far removed from being a Democrat as a person could be. So why did she run as one? For decades, the Arkansas Democrat Party sold itself to voters as the Big Tent Party, meaning it welcomed both liberal and conservatives as candidates and as voters. It had a monopoly on politics. Even in 2010, many Arkansas Democrats still called their party the Big Tent Party. That idea was strong in Pocahontas, where Linda lived, and in most of Northeast Arkansas. Nearly all politicians in that area still ran as Democrats, even though many considered themselves to be conservative. What Linda and the voters didn't realize was the political atmosphere in Little Rock had changed. In Little Rock, conservative Democrats were expected to get in line and support some liberal policies and big government expenditures when Democrat leaders told them it was an important vote. Yet, as a state representative, Linda didn't get in line. Instead, she followed up on her promises by supporting legislation that was pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, pro-family values, anti-tax increase, and pro-smaller government. David Ferguson writes, I don't recall which of her votes was the final straw, but she said after one vote in 2011, she was surrounded by leaders of the House of Representatives who angrily instructed her she would not cross leadership again and would fall in line. Linda was shocked and hurt by the men who towered over her. Quote, they talked to me like a dog, she said. Bullies, Democrat and Republican, would sometimes make her cry, but she would not be bullied. Her tears were not a sign that she would tuck tail and run. Instead, with her tears, she would get bowed up and all the more determined to do what she believed to be right. Powerful politicians were not just as important to her as her promises and not as important as the people back home. Realizing the big tent party of the Democrats no longer exi existed, Linda switched parties and became a Republican. But becoming a Republican was no trivial matter back then. The Republican Party was still the minority in Arkansas, and the voters in Northeast Arkansas had a consistent record of electing Democrats. She switched despite it being a hard thing to do politically. The voters would either agree with her or not, and so be it, because it had to be done. She switched because the Republican principles had been her principles all along. The principles are stated in the Arkansas Republican Party platform, the power of faith in God, the sanctity of life, individual responsibility and initiative, individual freedom, private property, lower taxes, strong national defense, the personal right to bear arms, the equal and just enforcement of the law, and separate and equal branches of government. Democrat governor. Her switch to the Republican Party came at a vulnerable time. It happened while Governor Mike Beebe, Attorney General Dustin McDaniel, and Secretary of State Mark Martin were redrawing the districts of the House of Representatives in the Senate. Beebe and McDaniel were Democrats, which meant they could ignore Republican Mark Martin and draw the districts to suit themselves. The House district where she lived was drawn so the Democrats could eliminate at least one Republican from the House of Representatives. They put Linda and another Republican incumbent, Lori Benedict, in the same district. Linda refused to run against Lori. After all, Lori had run as a Republican in 2010, and Linda had not. Lori ran for re-election to the House, but the new boundaries put the voter strength on the opposite end of the district, and she lost to Democrat Scott Baltz. As for Linda, she made the decision to run for the Arkansas Senate. Political observers saw it as an uphill battle. The biggest population area in the Senate district was on the opposite end of the district in Independence County where Senator David Wyatt, the popular Democratic incumbent, lived. Linda did very well, but lost the election, 51.2% to 48.8%. Linda got another opportunity to run for the Senate two years later in 2014 because following reapportionment, Senator Wyatt drew a two-year term. Linda announced as a candidate again. 
why it did not run for re-election, and Linda faced another Independence County resident and sitting state representative, James McLean. People associated her campaign, or people associated with her campaign, were worried Linda was spending too much time out of the district and that she needed to focus only on her race. She had been so close in 2012. What was she doing? She was taking some of her campaign time to promote the Republican Party across the state. She also took time to recruit Republican candidates for other offices, helped other Republican candidates get organized, and made speeches to fire up Republican women in other areas of the state. She was basically a Republican evangelist, and her work helped add to the number of Republicans elected in 2014. Her work outside her district didn't mean she was taking her race lightly. She worked hard on her campaign while also managing her business. She spent long hours every day working as hard as she could. Friends got text messages from her at all hours. Can you talk? Linda won the election. Not only did the Republicans go into 2015 having a majority of the House and Senate, they also took the governor's office. Linda, David Ferguson writes, was excited about being part of a Republican majority and about working with a Republican governor. But it didn't take long for Linda to find herself on the opposite side of the governor and his two senator nephews. The phone rang, David writes. It was Linda. I messed up. What can I do? Earlier in the day, the Senate had traveled to attend the funeral of a former senator. Senate leaders told the senators when they got back to Little Rock, they would finish the day considering a few non-controversial bills. One of those non-controversial bills was the governor's income tax cut for middle-income taxpayers. During the consideration of a supposed non-controversial bill, she voted for the middle-income tax cut, not realizing it had just been amended to add a section the governor wanted. To make up for some of the revenue that would be lost from the tax cut, the new section took away a capital gains tax cut passed by Republicans just two years earlier and had just become effective that month. Had she realized the non-controversial agenda included this controversial tax increase, she would have not voted for it. Linda was so embarrassed she took the unusual step of making a motion to recall the bill from the House of Representatives so the Senate could redo the vote. Her motion failed, and her move embarrassed and upset big government politicians. Just a few days had passed since the beginning of that legislative session, and Linda was already known as not a team player by those who wanted to advance anything on the governor's agenda. In 2017, helping some veterans by exempting military retirement pay from the state income tax was on everybody's list. But the approaches were different. The governor proposed raising several taxes to at least offset the revenue the state would lose from exempting military retirement pay. Linda opposed the tax increases and wanted the state to absorb the tax cut into the budget since tax revenues were growing and she thought little effort had been made to curb state spending. Even the military retirees who have part of their tax cut taken away by the new taxes uh, included in the bill. She compared the governor's version to leaving a man behind because although military retirees would get a benefit, veterans without military retirement would only get higher taxes. Video of the debate shows the governor's nephew, Senator Jim Hendren, attacking Linda personally by questioning her support for the military because she opposed the plan. She called me just a few minutes later. I think she called to vent and calm down before she was scheduled to do a radio interview. With her voice cracking, she said, he talked to me like a dog. David Ferguson writes, I immediately remember the other time I heard her use that phrase, it was when Democrat leadership surrounded her and chewed her out. Now, it was a Republican leader. Just as with the Democrats, the results were the same. She bowed up and was more determined than ever to stand for her principles. 
There were other tax increases that she also voted against, such as the governor's special tire tax on mounting new or used tires. Must have been very frustrating to leaders that she wouldn't break her promises and get in line. In her 2014 campaign for Senate, Linda had promised to work for the repeal of Obamacare Medicaid expansion in Arkansas, now called Arkansas Works, which, despite work-related requirements, primarily applies to able-bodied working-age adults who do not work. Everyone knew her pledge. It had been posted on large billboards on the highway on the south side as you approach the city of Batesville. She viewed the program as draining Arkansas funds that she thought could be better used helping the needy citizens, such as our disabled citizens, or in addressing other urgent needs. Again, her pledge put her at odds with Governor Hutchinson, who championed the program. In 2016, she and some other senators vowed to block funding for the Obamacare program. The administration responded by claiming that she and the other senators would be responsible for the loss of federal funds going into the program and would cause drastic budget cuts all throughout the state budget. A list of claimed cuts was circulated, and indeed, everything from health care to schools, it was pain point politics, but the Batesville Guard newspaper eagerly attacked Linda based on the outlandish list. A few senators backed down, but Linda wasn't one of them. The governor got the funding continued, but only after he went to the unusual step of telling legislators to let the restriction against Obamacare funding be added to the budget bill because he would then later veto the restriction. The Batesville Guard article was widely read and assumed to be true by uninformed readers. It weakened her support in the Batesville area, and it may have been the moment it was decided to find an opponent to take her out in the next election. In 2017, Representative Charlie Collins put a simple but controversial bill up about college employees who wanted to be able to carry weapons on campus. Representative Collins' bill sailed through the House, but the governor's nephew, Jeremy Hutchinson, was the chair of the Judiciary Committee where it would be considered. Hutchinson blocked the bill from being considered when there appeared to be enough votes to pass the bill in the committee. Linda's name was added as a co-sponsor of the bill by the amendment, but Senator Hutchinson had other amendments added, many restrictions, limitations, and requirements that Linda opposed. The, the restrictions appeared to be intended to weaken support for the bill uh, if it passed, uh, or, or if it passed. Linda led the charge against the amendments, rallying Arkansas gun rights advocates. The NRA sent out an email alert to members saying Linda had proposed an amendment to make the bill straightforward a straightforward gun rights bill and urged members to support her amendment. But then the NRA quickly reversed course and dropped support for Linda's amendment to take a deal from the administration. Linda served on the ethics committee. This article, we're going to have to take a break. This, I, I want to continue this. Uh, I want to continue this on the other side of the hour. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start here in the middle of this great article. And if you haven't read it, you need to check it out. Um, it's at conduitforaction.org about the late Senator Linda Collins and her perseverance. Perseverance. Um, picking up in the middle of the battle for Arkansas gun rights, okay? Linda, Linda led the charge against uh, amendments that were uh, added to a gun bill that uh, were meant to torpedo the gun bill so she led the charge against the amendments rallying arkansas gun rights advocates she made an urgent call to fox news contributor and arkansas businesswoman jan morgan saying she needed her help and morgan became a powerful ally in the heated debates that lasted days the nra sent out an email alert to members saying linda had proposed an amendment to make the bill a straightforward gun rights bill and urged its members to support her amendment but then the NRA quickly reversed course and dropped support for Linda's amendment to take a deal from the administration to keep the heavy restrictions in exchange for broadening who could carry and wear. The bill passed, still with Linda's name on it, but not with her vote, David Ferguson writes. During the bill signing ceremony, the governor announced he would be pushing for another bill to be quickly passed 
to add more limitations on where the new law would apply. The NRA called Linda for help to stop the new bill. She thought they had a lot of gall after the NRA betrayed her and gun rights advocates. Linda served on the Arkansas Ethics Commission before seeking political office. She knew the importance of ethics in government. The open secret in the legislature was that some legislators were representing clients in legislative matters, especially Senator Jeremy Hutchinson, who as a lawyer gained clients who just happened to benefit from his representing their interests in state government. In 2017, Linda filed a bill to prohibit attorney legislators and consultant legislators from representing clients before the legislature. The bill failed. It should be noted that Linda and one other senator filed ethics bills that year, and both were targeted and defeated in the Republican primary. It should also be noted that earlier this year, Senator Jeremy Hutchinson pled guilty to accepting bribes to influence legislation. Linda did not live long enough to see that. Sticking to her promises put her in conflict with the agenda of the governor and his senator nephews. Everyone knew this meant she would get an opponent in the 2018 Republican primary. Her 2018 campaign got off to a very late start. Meanwhile, her opponent was busy and his campaign signs were showing up attached to Governor Hutchinson's signs throughout the district. Pocahontas had suffered from a flood in 2017 and instead of preparing for her campaign, Linda stayed busy trying to assist everyone to get the help they needed during the long recovery. Helping others is just what she did. David Ferguson writes, I can't count the times I would get a call from her seeking advice on how to help someone she thought had been treated wrongly by a state agency. She never just went through the motions of appearing to help. She always worked as hard as she could for them, no matter how much time and effort it took. A much bigger distraction was that her marriage was falling apart. If the distractions had not been there, would it have made any difference in her race? Maybe not. Big money interest had been pushed to the line or had been pushed to line up against her. During the campaign, she went to a function, I think a charitable auction, where her opponent spoke. Next, some other local officials spoke and then it was her turn. But for some reason, Linda didn't want to embarrass her opponent who sat not far away, so she never mentioned him by name. Afterwards, people came up to her wishing her luck and wondering who her opponent was. Her troubles had made her more soft-hearted than a campaign required. She lost the primary, 5,309 to 4,735. It was essentially the second time a governor had taken her out. Once a Democrat and another a Republican. Often when a legislator is defeated, for re-election. The outgoing politician will attend a few meetings, basically to say goodbye to friends, and then fade away. Linda did not fade away. Not only did Linda continue to attend meetings, she worked as hard as she could. One of the issues she continued to work on was exposing problems in the operation of Child Protective Services and its willingness to take a child away despite the child's relatives wanting custody. I think the thing she was most proud of from her time in the legislature was her votes for pro-life bills. Many times when she talked about abortion, her emotions would get the best of her and out would come a deep sigh, oh the babies. She was proud of the times where she was able to convince liberal Democrats to support one of her bills and proud when she was able to get citizens involved in the political process. She seemed to work harder than ever after she was out of office. David Ferguson writes, she had more energy than I had seen in a long time. I'm not sure what all she was working on, but she was still attending meetings and promoting causes. She continued her work advocating for grandparents who wanted to adopt their grandchildren, but were not allowed to by the state. Linda was murdered in her own home, stabbed to death. The who and the why remains a mystery to me, even though someone has been charged. David Ferguson writes, I just hope justice will be done. 
David Ferguson concludes this truthful piece saying that Linda was not the only politician I know who was willing to take the consequences for standing up for principles. I witnessed politicians on both the left and right do that. What was different about Linda was that she was willing to do that over and over again. A few days ago, I saw a parking lot full where I was told the banquet of the Spring River Friends of the NRA was being held. The organization raises money for shooting sports. Linda co-founded the organization. I think the fruits of her work will show up in many places. I also hope people will remember Linda for her friendship, her faith, her devotion to family, and for being a person who put principles above political expediency. David Ferguson, up right now at conwithreaction.org. Perseverance. <clears throat> this was a fantastic piece. Please, I would really encourage you. It, I know it's out on the, our Facebook pages. I know it's on the CFA pages, uh, Conduit News. And uh, I would just encourage you guys, please share this and get this to as many people as you can. It's, it's, uh, it's, so, it's so good. I mean, if, if you want to summarize the political career of a uh, former Senator Linda Collins, then please uh, share this article by David Ferguson, who knew her, uh, knew, her knew her when uh, he was working in government at the Bureau of Legislative Research and then outside of the Bureau. Uh, it's fascinating. And I tell you what stands out to me the most is that th that line in there uh, towards the end where she effectively had been defeated by uh, the second time she'd been defeated by a governor, a different governor. So Mike Beebe redraws the lines to eliminate her from the legislature. And, and then Governor Hutchinson, years later, after she's back in the legislature, finds her a primary opponent because she would not fall in line with the, what the party said uh, were the priorities because she believed in her principles of limited government. And, uh, that, that to me is just absolutely fascinating. And again, and again, I want to read this one part of the article. Uh, David Ferguson writes, Some who read this will find themselves aligned not with Linda, but with Democrats or with, quote, pragmatic or left-leaning Republicans. If so, that is okay. Because my point here is not to criticize her opponents. Instead, the point here is to help you see that Linda meant what she said, said what she meant, and gave it a hundred percent. And she certainly did that. And uh, man, that is, uh, I just, I respect her legacy so much. And uh, you know, people on Facebook, let me read some of your comments. People are wanting to know, you know, asking politicians, you know, well, what else is, uh, what else are, are Arkansas politicians going to do to continue uh, this legacy. Uh, people saying, Janet on Facebook, thank you, David Ferguson, for your article on Linda. Uh, Reggie, thank you, David Ferguson. Uh, Jackie, so what will the people do going forward to further Linda's legacy? Um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, just uh, keep the comments coming in, and uh, it's it's just so good. Um, this and this and again, please share the article. I I, I just I just when I read it, I, I guess. There are very few times that you read something that is just so full of, of truth. It's such a record. And I just, want, I just want the average person that doesn't know this story, that doesn't know what happened, I just want, I just want other people to know. I genuinely want other people to know about uh, uh, this, this comprehensive summary of, of her political career. Because it, it was so good. And Linda was my, my friend. And I was, you know, she was my personal friend as well. And uh, the tragedy surrounding her death, there's still such a vacuum of information um, out there. And it, a lot of people have questions. But um, I'm just going to, uh, we're just going to keep waiting for more information on that front. Uh, anyway, so let me know what you think. 870-275-9799. Again, the article is uh, Perseverance. Um, Linda Collins, check it out.